Hello world, this is live from QNAP headquarters in Taipei, Taiwan. I'm marketing specialist Michael and here I have product manager Jason with me. Hi Jason. Hi, I'm Michael. Hi everyone. So today will be the first session of our two-day sneak preview on our new hardware products and our upcoming QTS software updates. But today we are going only going to focus on our new hardware line, the TS x77 line so jason we have announced this product line back in june do you have any new pro product update that you can bring up to speed yeah so uh since computex we have spent time uh, on the r d center and also testing teams to uh, work on the 77 series so we also uh, decided on the final skills for this uh, 77 series. So today I'm going to give you a quick update of the 77 including the hardware and uh, what's new about the software. All right, cool. For some of our users who haven't heard about the Ryzen processor, Jason, can you tell us what's so special about Ryzen processors? Yeah, the so AMD Ryzen processor was uh, launched, they were launched in uh, March this year. And uh, after that, it's been um, uh, generated a lot of uh, Heat and uh, buzz in the marketing in the in, in the world, and so uh, QNAP uh, 77 series we've uh, picked the power efficient 65 watts processors uh, with uh, for example with the uh, three different CPU models. So starting with the uh, entry level, it's a Ryzen 5 1400. It it has a uh, four cores of uh, processing power with eight threads, and the base frequency is a uh, 3.2 gigahertz and uh, it can also turbo core to 3.4 gigahertz and uh, the middle level will be Ryzen 5 1600 so it comes with uh, 6 cores and 12 threads and uh, the base frequency is 3.2 gigahertz but it can compared to the 4 core version it can uh, turbo core up to 3.6 gigahertz and the uh, top end uh, processor we use on the 77 series is uh, Ryzen 7 1700 which gives you 8 cores and 16 threads of processing power uh, with a base frequency of uh, 3.0 gigahertz and uh, up to 3.7 gigahertz. Well, that sounds like a lot of computing power, but uh, is there any specific applications or scenario that are best for our Ryzen us? Yeah, so with all uh, the three different process uh, uh, selections, we have uh, created uh, these three different uh, models. So which is uh, TS677, 6 bay with the Ryzen 5 1400 and the 8 gig gigabyte of memory. And then the 8 bay the A77 version with two different uh, CPUs and RAM combinations. And the 12 bay models with also two different CPU selections and uh, RAM combinations. Uh, with this, uh, you know, with uh, this uh, starting with four core up to eight core, it, it's really a very suitable candidate for your business. Uh, whether you want to have a super fast uh, uh, performance or have a very good uh, run of virtual machines on these NAS with our train station, so it's a very good uh, device for you to deploy in the business. So besides those powerful processing powers, how about its networking performance? Yeah. So here we just. Uh, this is based on a quick test uh, in our lab. So as you can see, uh, when you install a 40 gig card from QNAP on this uh, 77 series, you can see the performance is actually very, very good. Uh, so we, uh, we have used IO meter and uh, two workers to concurrently read and write with the CD4 KB and uh, sequential transfer. The performance actually is 4,000 megabyte per second. So it gives you a really, really nice performance. Even with the encryption enabled, as you can see here, when you deploy the AES-256 encryption, then it still can hold its uh, champ uh, at uh, 3,800 megabyte per second uh, for read, and the write is 3,200 megabyte per second. So it's very good for your data center or large organization business usage. Uh, then, uh, if you want to, to use it with more affordable 10 gigabit uh, connectivity, you can also install an optional 10 gigabit 2 port or even 1 port with it. And then, so here it gives you data on the two 10 gigabit ports uh, and when used with a Windows uh, client. So with the Windows computers, two of them, uh, you can achieve up to uh, 2,000 megabyte per second in uh, read and then uh, 1,300 for uh, write. 
and then even with encryption, as you can see, it's pretty much uh, uh, just very, very little tiny penalty with encryption enabled. Well, it sounds like a very powerful NAS in every way. Mm -hmm. So n right now we have uh, 1277 with us. So Jason, can you walk through the components of this NAS? Yeah, sure. So let's take a look at the, the front side. Uh, here you will see that, uh, uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint uh, slide. Here you can see the front uh, on the top of the left uh, side, you have uh, many different kinds of LED indicators that you can even adjust the brightness uh, based on your environment. And then so you have uh, LED indicators for hard drives, SSDs and m tools. And then uh, depending on the models, you have uh, different uh, uh, two, four, uh, 2.5 inch SSD trays. You can use it for our QT auto tiering and SSD caching support. And then uh, also depend, depends on the model, you have four, six or eight 3.5 inch hard drive trays with a large capacity hard drive you can install. And then uh, you can, the, tra the trays also support 2.5 inch drive, whether it's SSDs or hard drives, you can use a screw to install them. And then on the top here, uh, there's a LCD monitor with enter and select buttons. Here you can instantly see the IP address and the status of the system. And then of course there's a power button on the front and a USB 3.1 Gen 1, which is a 5 gig, or same speed as a USB 3.0, and the copy button to go with it. How about the back side? Okay, on the rear side, uh, here basically it comes with the latest technology. Uh, yeah, just turn it around. You can see it on the screen. Okay, uh, sorry, go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, uh, this one, this 77 series has two of the USB, USB 3.1 Gen 2, so which gives you 10 gigabit per second transfer. So we have added, the, you see the red connector, Type A, and then the other one is a Type C. So you can use it with the latest Type C SSDs to get, gives you almost like 800 megabyte per second data transfer speed. And uh, of course, with QNAP, uh, we like our tradition, we gives you two of the dynamic microphone inputs and uh, one line out. Okay, so you can connect to your microphones or uh, amplifier to use our audio applications. And then it comes with a four gigabit lens, so you can use them uh, to connect to different uh, subnets, different networks, and then or to do, you can do a network balancing to give you a much better performance compared to single lens. And then five of the USB 3.1 Gen 1 5 gig uh, speed on the back here. Okay. Now another uh, benefit of this uh, Ryzen NAS is that uh, we give you so many uh, and high performance PCI slots, so you can install so many uh, peripherals from QNAP or from third party. For example, on the top right here, this one has a uh, one PCI 3 Gen 3 by 16 slot. So it is recommended for installing an external graphics card and now get more about it later. And then another two on the left hand side on the top is a, it has a PCI Gen 3 by four. And then the bottom one is a PCI Gen 2 by four. So with those you can install high speed network cards uh, and then any other, for example, SAS expansion card and any, any other accessories to go with it. And uh, finally, here we give you two of the stereo, uh, two of the speakers. So you can use it. since uh, QTS 4.3, we have uh, deployed uh, audio technology. So not only you can listen, you can hear the NAS status, such as uh, for example backup job status or the NAS system health. You can also use that to play music with certain applications. Okay, so it's a very uh, highly craft NAS device. So you just said that uh, this NAS can install graphic cards, right? Yeah, I'll get to it later. So when we when you remove the top cover, what's underneath it? Okay, here if you look on the left hand side, there's a uh, dual fan coolers, which help, uh, for example, on the bottom one, it helps to blow out the hot air from the CPU and heatsink to bring the hot air out. And on top, if you install some of the PCIe cards that generate heat, you can also help uh, dissipate the heat. And if you look at uh, the motherboard itself on the left, on the, near the front side, there's uh, two of the M.2 SATA SSD slots. So we basically we, comp we are compatible with all the different M.2 SSD uh, lengths, the form factor. For example, starting from the, the largest one, 2210, 
and then the currently the most common one 20 to 80 all the way down to the smaller ones 20 to 60 and 20 to 42 and then this one also gives you four of the DDR4 you take that is technology it is, compa it is compatible with DDR4 20 to 2400 so four of the long beam slots and so if you install four of the 16 gigabyte you can achieve the working 64 gigabyte RAM on this 77 series okay so a lot of capacity yeah so let's go to the desktop you just mentioned right yeah. desktop GPU so um the old series here starting from 677 comes with a 250 watt power supply unit and then the 7877 and 1277 comes with a 450 watt and a 550 watt so these are designed for you to work with an external graphics card from AMD or NVIDIA and here is the compatible dimensions that uh, you can use and I will demonstrate how to actually uh, install a graphics Grab his car later. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. So, in not talking, so let's get started with this real machine, shall yeah, we? Yeah, so uh, before I get to that, uh, I want to show you. You may wonder how you can use with the external graphic card. Okay, so if you, are, if you are familiar with QNET NAS, you know that our virtual station it enables you to, on some of our high end NAS, you can install AMD or NVIDIA discrete graphics card and then use it for, to pass through the GPU power to the station but what's more in the upcoming QTS 4.3.4 which will be available in October we have uh, done a lot of work to make it worthwhile on this device for example you can after you install uh, currently it only supports a media graphics card because of the driver support so if you install uh, NVIDIA GTX uh, like I, I mentioned here 1050 1060 1070 and uh, P2000 graphics card then you can the QTS can utilize the graphics card power and then use it for for example hybrid desk station for video playback and display uh, Linux station for the Linux uh, could always to utilize the GPU and also you can use it for hardware accelerated transcoding with the GPU power mm -hmm. Alright, it's time for a real machine I guess I get too excited because I keep, want, keep just wanting to jump to the graphic card <laughs> part it's very exciting Alright, let's get started Okay, so in this uh, live demo I'm gonna show you how you can uh, do it on yourself with uh, some of the components so to upgrade the uh, 77 parts, it's very simple. You just need to remove um, a certain number of screws here on the back. Once you remove them, you can lift the top, lift the top cover here. Okay. And let me show you on the, what's on the side. So here you have uh, two PCI slots, like I just mentioned on the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, a large heat sink. Okay, this one heat sink, uh, it's a uh, very, uh, you can see very uh, beefy one. If the dimension is a uh, 90 by 90 by 65 to have a uh, display the uh, CPU heat and then uh, there's two different fan coolers here so how you can for example let's say you, you bought a 8 gig or 16 gig version how you can upgrade more memory okay so suppose you have a two about two more here remember we support dual channel memory so if you want to install better to install in pairs of two or yes. four okay? yes. So basically you remove the top screw here, that's one. So you want to remove this one here. And then we remove the power connector to the fan. Okay, let me change to the right position, better position. Okay, better angle. So remove the, the fan power here from the motherboard, okay. And then you can uh, remove the fan module very easily. So fan module will be removed. And then here you have access to, like I just, uh, you can show if you pay attention to my PowerPoint earlier, uh, two of the M.2 SSD slots and the memory slots here. So if you can see the uh, different colors, you know, on the RAM, I'll talk about RAM first. You see there are blue and, uh, and uh, black, black uh, uh, memory slots, okay. So by default, uh, QNAP shift them within the dual channel configuration, so the two themes will be installed on the blue ones so that's a uh, channel A and B okay so if you want to install more memory you just need to install them here remember if you just uh, someday you want if you end up with just one theme remember to install it on the, this one further away furthest away from the slot okay 
If you have two, then just one and three here on the same color. If you want to install two more, okay, just install them here. If you want to just install three of them, you should do them here, okay. And then if you want this one here, okay. So I won't actually install them just to give you an idea how you can install them. For M.2 SSDs, we have a give, given you a screw here. This one allows you, it's a hand screw. So this allows you to determine based on your M.2 SSD uh, length. So you can put them in the right position. I have already put one here just to show you. After that, you just need to uh, install M.2 SSD here and then put a screw here. And what's more, because you, some of you probably have experience with M.2, you know, they are not like traditional 2.5 inch SSD where they have a outer sh uh, yeah. metal shell to help uh, with yeah, the heat because case. it can really get hot. Okay. <laughs> so with the 77, we include this uh, brand new custom made by QNAP, the M.2 SSD uh, heat sink. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually install this on this uh, M.2 SSD. So this will be, we include, since this has two, the 77 has two M.2 SSD slots, so we include two of them for you, okay, in the package. So this uh, M.2 SSD heat sink is composed of uh, several different components. First of all, you wanna, when you receive, it's gonna be like this. You wanna remove the spring. So you just, basically there are two here, just push them out. You can take out the spring here. Okay, this is the spring. And then another, you can break up three, sorry, <laughs> three different parts. So remove the holder here and the heat sink. Okay. So and thermal pad on the bottom. So what you want to do next is uh, here. This is uh, M.2 SSD. Okay. Okay. Yeah, one, two, okay. So you want to remove the, the, the adhesive part here. So it can. Uh, be stick on the M.2 SSDs. So here you want to look at located one uh, on the top side here. So basically here, if you look at there's a, a line here. So just align them the, with the this one. This one we have put a hole so you can uh, install 2280. So this is think uh, it, it is compatible with the 2280 and 22, 2260 uh, M.2 SSDs. So just align them here. Okay and then just push it a little bit. So now this, we have a success, successfully installed a heat sink with the M.2 SSD, all right? Can you see that? Okay, the next step is uh, you wanna put it back. It doesn't matter which direction you put it in, it can be either way, left or right, okay? As long as it goes into the, the, the right uh, position here, mm -hmm. okay? After that, uh, you wanna put this back. So let you try with a, a higher angle here and then try to push it all the way back in. Then here you have uh, successfully installed a M.2 SSD heatsink with that. So after that you can already directly install the M.2 SSD here into the 77 motherboard and then you don't have to worry about it getting too hot. And then because uh, when it gets to overheat it can uh, degrade the performance, SSD performance as well as damage the, the life lifespan. And the heat sink provided is suitable for all four factors, right? Uh, no, for 2280 and 2260. Oh, 2260. Yeah, because uh, 40, 2242 and 2242 is uh, obsolete now. Mm -hmm. Very, very rare. So we just go go with the mainstream. Right, the sure. mainstream right now is 2280. Yeah. And 2210 currently because um, it's not a common for the SATA version, SATA mm -hmm. SSD. So we just chose to go with 2280 and 60. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So now next one is the graphics card. So I have a cho prepare uh, this uh, GT G Media GeForce uh, GTX 1050 Ti, and this one is a half height prof profile card. So it's very easy to install it on the 77 series. So let me show you. Yeah, sure. So I previously uh, to re remove the brackets here. Okay. So. You just need to install a card and then just put the screw back in so you can see very easy to be installed here okay now with the 8 bay and uh, 12 bay version because uh, this 
these two different models comes with a more power, more powerful power supply, mm -hmm. 450 watts and uh, 550 watts. So with these models, we actually include extra power connectors, power cables for you to, if you want, for example, if you want to install a more powerful graphic cards that require external power, you can use this provided extra power supply cables to connect to your graphics card. But this one, since it's a broad profile, energy efficient car, so it doesn't actually need extra power. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we provide the possibility to expand it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, I finished the uh, installing the memory, uh, M.2 SSDs, and the graphics car. So now let's go back to the QTS. I will show you how you can actually work with QTS with those uh, new features. So first of all, you after you install a car and log into QTS with a 3, uh, 4.3.4, you go to the control panel, click on the system, and then hardware. As you can see, there's a brand new tab called graphics card. Graphics card here, okay, graphics card. And then here on the button, you will see uh, there's a table, depends on how many graphics cards you have installed. Uh, I installed one NVIDIA GTX uh, 1050 Ti here, okay, and uh, you can see the uh, memory usage on this uh, graphics card, as well as the GPU usage, fan speed, and uh, temperatures. And here, the important part is, is how you hear, this is where you dis define how you want to assign the GPU power to a specific application, one or more, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's uh, one of the two, okay, since I only have one card. They cannot be used by different. For example, uh, what I want to say is that if you have a one GPU card, you cannot assign it for both because mm -hmm. of the architectural differences. So first one, I have the all good friend virtual station. You can assign it for virtual station. Okay, this works with any uh, AMD, AMD or NVIDIA card. But if you have a NVIDIA card, you have extra option which is for HD station, Linux station, and hardware transcoding. Okay. So once you have assigned for HD session and how it transcoding those QTS usage, what's more is that uh, now since this this AMD CPU does not have a built-in graphics uh, unit, mm -hmm. so after you install an external card, you just you can install a QNAP HD station here, and then go to settings. Wow, you see, you instantly I have connected the NAS into a HDMI 2.0 uh, monitor. And you see now the NAS can actually output uh, 4K 60 frames per second uh, graphics power. So you can play any kinds of uh, high resolution video with this device. So, so we can utilize the full potential of the graphic card along with our NAS. Yes. Right, that's yeah. cool. So let's uh, end my uh, demonstration. So let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Never, so, never mind. Uh -huh. uh, Jason, the <coughs> final question. Mm -hmm. We uh, we have been looking forward to this NAS very much. Can you give us an ex estimate date about when it will be available on the market? Yeah, uh, right now the 77 series are already in the final stage of testing and verification. So uh, they'll hopefully uh, you should be able to see them in the market uh, sometime in uh, quarter four. This coming quarter and of uh, this year so it's coming very soon yes yes so hope everyone who is been, who sorry to have kept you waiting but uh, if you are looking for this uh, multi-core processing power with on a QNAP NAS that uh, with just a fraction of the competitor NAS or the CPU that then look forward to the 77 series like I said it's really a beast with such a powerful computing power well, that's it's very exciting. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Well, and we actually have some more multimedia application we want to show you. Mm -hmm. I have another product manager with me, and let's Ken. Hello, Ken. Hi, Michael. What kind of interesting new feature are you going to tell us today? Yeah, as you see, I bring a lot of a uh, 360 camera. You can see this one is a Xiaomi, and this one is a Rico, and this one is a Java PIO with the iPhone. And also, a lot of this type of 360 camera is right now is very popular in the market, and you, you can get this kind of device very easily, and also the price is quite reasonable and, and affordable. And, it, and also, a lot of like famous websites such as 
Facebook, YouTube, and they already support the 360 playback. Then, then you see this is the, our YouTube screen. Then when you upload the 360 video to the YouTube, you can simply use the mouse to see the different angle. Yeah, it's yeah. very cool. Then, okay. Then, so a lot of this type of uh, device is very easy and popular in the market. So let's talk about what is a 360 uh, photo and video. As you see, this is a 360 camera. They have a two uh, fish eye camera. Then you can take the image or different angle on this uh, location. When you took this uh, image or video, some of the device uh, you will need. Uh, some of the device record this uh, video or photo as the fish eye format. So you may need the post to stitch to the rectangular format. And some of the device, for example, this one is record, it support the direct stitch the image to the rectangular format. So you don't need to use another post to convert it. So it's and why we need to convert this to rectangular format because the when you upload to Facebook or YouTube, you may need the equatangular format. So the player will use the 360 playback function to playback those kind of uh, format. And you can see a lot of like different popular camera in the market. For, for example, and there have some is a uh, one uh, single fish eye and this is a uh, most popular how it design in the market is using the dual fish eye such as recall or gamma. <coughs> so what kind of new feature have we integrated to our QTS update regarding to the 360 paranormal pictures? Yeah, as I mentioned before, this type of 360 camera is become popular in the market. A lot of our users May, may have this kind of uh, device. When you upload the file to the our QTN NAS, you may need a player to pay back those kind of device. So in our new firmware 4.3.4, we already support the playback the 360 video or photo. So this, as you see, uh, if the player didn't support the 360 playback function, as you see on the left screen, the picture is a bit strange. You cannot see different angle. When you uh, turn on the 360 function, you can simply use the mouse cursor to drop to see the different angle on the same image. Yeah, but uh, why is the picture not displayed correctly? Okay, let's make some introduction about the 360 file format. Some of the file, if the 360 file have the one metadata called projection type equal to the equatangular format, so the system will know this is 360 function. For example, Facebook or YouTube, if you upload the file to Facebook or YouTube, your file itself may need to include this kind of uh, metadata or so the system will know this is 360. Then they will launch the 360 player based on this uh, file format. And based on this reason, if you upload to our NAS, our NAS also provide another function. If the, the file itself is 360 video or photo, but you don't have this kind of information. So you, you want to watch as the 360 playback function. And on our screen, it's pretty easy. You you just uh, simply click one 360 button, then our application will launch the 360 player to pay back those guys of video or photo. So even the file doesn't have the correct metadata, uh, with one click in our NAS software, we can still display them correctly. Yeah, you're right. That's cool. Okay. Here you can see in our new firmware 4.3.4 in our file station, photo station, video station or users already support the 360 playback. And even on 
the mobile apps such as uh, Q4, Q4 Talk, QB Video, we also provide this function to let the user easily pay back the 360 photo and video. So this new feature is supported in a lot of our softwares. Yeah, you could. And that's very convenient. Okay, later on I will do the, a demo on how we our QTS 4.3.4 playback those kind of uh, file format. As you see, uh, in our screen, this is our photo station. If the uh, file format itself has the 360 metadata, then the system will mark as the this is a 360 photo. You will see a lot of the 360 icon on the top left of the yeah. image. So if this kind of grid, uh, photo, you just double click on it, then the system will launch the 360 player to play back as a just a, a simple drop the mouse cursor to see the different angle it's pretty cool yeah, yeah. okay but how about for pictures that doesn't include the appropriate metadata oh for example if uh, i turn on the photo station again you can see in this picture this is a 360 image but it don't have the metadata so the system at the beginning will not auto launch the 360 playback so you just simply click the 360 icon then the system will launch the 360 to that's play that's very convenient yeah so later on i will show you how we did on our mobile app Let's sure. change to the mobile view. Okay. So this is our Q file. As I said before, I already log into one NAS. I go to the multimedia and I go to the photo. You can see a lot of like picture already. A lot of 360 video or photo already inside this folder. You just like simply click an image then you can just simply click the 360 then to launch the 360 video of uh, in, to see the different angle in this uh, of then in this mobile app we also provide another cool function for the user we support the cardboard module then you just simply click the cardboard why you need this one you can use it with the this kind of a device then you can see like a VR mode yeah it's pretty cool this is called a cardboard function oh, that's cool yeah. you can actually see what's happening yeah that's true all right that sounds like a lot of fun right, like that pretty much concludes our presentation today thank you for watching but stay tuned for tomorrow because we are going to introduce the snapshot feature on our ARM-based models. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching today. Bye-bye. Thank you.